Hey, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. We're here at Minor Street Recording Studios, it hosts a Weather Vane Music, and also the Shaking Through video series. It's been a source of my inspiration. This very room is the place where I was first exposed to things like reamping, using uh, sounds of the room, getting effects that are real, using real instruments. So much of my techniques of Creative Sound Lab were actually first exposed to me from this very place. So um, I wanted to bring the episode up here and just let you hear directly from Brian. So today we're actually going to be checking out uh, some reamping techniques. Uh, Brian uses reamping constantly for bass, uh, a lot for guitar, and even for some effects and some vocals. Uh, but today we're just going to be checking out um, some bass. Now this bass track is actually from a Leia Thomas episode of Shaking Through. I'll provide the link in the description below. So Leia Thomas was recording uh, the song Wild As You Are. We were recording it for an episode of Shaking Through. The most important reason that we chose to reamp this bass basically backs up to the fact that we really prefer uh, the raw basic tracks for a band to be cut with as much of a live ensemble as we can maintain. In other words, we don't record the drums and then record the bass and then record the guitar and record, you know, we know there's going to be a ton in the, in the tracking of any song, there's going to be a ton of individual overdubs. But we feel really sort of really strongly about the fact that those overdubs will be far better if they're tracking on top of some sort of live ensemble of players, multiple players. So we, we wanted to record the band live. We only have this one isolation space for either a bass or a guitar. And so we decided we would keep the guitar, we'd track a direct signal on the bass, and then reamp it later. You know, the track was recorded through a DI just like this. That DI signal was actually recorded to tape and then dumped into Pro Tools. We were able to then uh, run the bass amp signal out of Pro Tools through a reamp device and back into this amplifier. And basically, uh, that allowed us to turn a direct signal back into a combination of a direct signal and a bass amp. The reamp device that we've been using for a few years is the Creation Audio Labs MW1. Um, it's a really overbuilt uh, reamping device. It has um, much more func functionality than we probably really need. It has impedance controls on every input and output on the whole device. There's much simpler reamp devices out there. The one we just happened to buy eight or 10 years ago was the Creation Audio Labs MW1. I was getting Here Brian is showing me how he gets the signal from Pro Tools through the MW1 out to the amp. But it's coming back out of Pro Tools through here, right? This goes into the amp out there. And this is actually how hard we can drive it, right? We can drive the amp harder if we want. You know? Which is awesome, you know? The microphone, the U67 is coming in through this AML 1073, you know? And we can, if we want, we can drive the pre. We can EQ. And then coming out of the, the preamp EQ, it's going to this compressor, you know. So in review, the bass player plugs into a DI box. The DI box goes into a preamp. That preamp goes into the tape machine. From the tape machine, it's dumped into Pro Tools and later goes out through the MW1 reamp device into the amp. From the amp, it's recorded with the U67 into the AML 1073 style preamp and EQ, then into an LA2A. Here's a demo of the final bass sound. Now I know for me it's really cool to be able to hear a soloed bass track from a more seasoned engineer. 
While critically listening to a whole mix with all the tracks in their context is important, it's definitely a different experience to get to hear the individual tracks that make up that great mix. So what's Weathervane? <clears throat> so Weathervane Music is a nonprofit that I started uh, back in 2009. Uh, we did several years of episodes where we were mostly focused on benefiting the artists. But as time went along, you know, we realized there's also thousands of people now who want to learn how to record. We started capturing recordings uh, so that we could share them with anybody in the world who is interested in hearing what our snare drum sounds like up close and then fitting it into a mix in their own speakers, in their own system. It, it took me about 15 years to be even remotely decent as an engineer. If I could have just known for sure what a professionally recorded bass sounded like, I could have skipped, a, skipped ahead seven to 10 years. So that's what Weathervane allows people to do. These are real recordings. They're not just demonstrational. They're real, real recordings. Um, and so if you want to hear what real recordings that end up getting played on the radio sound like on a track-by-track -track basis, this is your chance. Okay, so I've had a blast today. Uh, it was really cool to hear from Brian how he gets some of these sounds, how he really uses reamping to sculpt the sounds and also sculpt performances as well. Um, I think that uh, live recording is where it's at and reamping with live recording is like the best of both worlds. Uh, we get the separation of the amps, but we get the inspired performance of having all the people in the room right next to the drum set and they're just jamming out. Uh, so this is a really key concept for everything that I do at my studio and it was really cool to really hear it from Brian as well. If you want more information about Weathervane Music, you can check out weathervanemusic.org.